dove c'è il... Ah, ecco. È partito, perfetto. Eh, quindi cominciamo a continuare la nostra diciamo, problematica di, di reti neurali, intelligenza artificiale e un po' diciamo, di sottilezza, con essi può l'utilizzo di questa diciamo, grande scoperta, diciamo, di, di, di quella scoperta. Allora, questa è una storia, qua, diciamo, come una, un formalismo matematico elaborato negli anni 60, diciamo, del secolo scorso, si è trasformato ad improvviso in un strumento molto potente per risolvere molti problemi che non si potevano risolvere a English. You should, you should use English. Uh, so, it, it, was, it was a very interesting uh, discovery how the usually usual mathematical formalism for to, to copy and to study some uh, action of uh, of our of our intelligence uh, become a power for resolving some a series of problems uh, which can, cannot be resolved by usual uh, methods of uh, mathematical formalization. First of all, uh, your opinion, what is the mathematical model generally? How do you imagine what is it? For, for mathematical model, we see some phenomena, yes, we see some process, natural process or something. We study, we measure, we, we know how it works. Then we construct mathematical model. What does it mean? Yes, for you. What is mathematical model? Uh, the statistics are not the, the... Yes, of course it is description, but in which sense is it description? Uh, if we do that again, we can uh, we have uh, something that can describe uh, how it will happen. Something, something like, something yeah. like. But really, really, mathematical model is nothing else than to to construct some function. If we have, if we have some measurements, for example, we have some parameter and in the in connection with this parameter we have some values which we can measure then we can construct some function some dependence of other parameter which uh, which depend on this parameter so we can construct a function in this uh, particular sense, it is a function on one uh, variable, but can be can be vectorial functions or, 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 or depend uh, which depend on some vectorial arguments. So, mathematical model is always to construct some pair function. It, it usually, usually it it it. First, we to we can build in table, uh, in table view, yes, in table form, and then one can or guess or divine or in, in other sense can write down some analytical function, and then to explain why, for example, uh, exponent or logarithm or other type of, uh, of very well-known functions. So, Mathematical model is always a function. So begin to to consider our begin to consider this function. So after introduction of after introduction of uh, neural net 
and the methods of gradient, uh, gradient, uh, the, the, the shed, gradient the shed algorithm, which uh, find, which, which find absolute minimum of a function, uh, which depends on a lot of parameters. And this gradient descent give us, uh, in some sense, the best way to to find some iterations which uh, lead us to to find uh, absolute uh, absolute minimum of uh, our function. And which function we find for the minimum? The minimum is our cost function, and this cost function is a uh, criterion to learn our neural net, okay? And how we do? First, we have the gradient descent method. And the second, we have the training algorithm, which is the back propagation procedure. So we first uh, make some forward calculation of the reaction of the response of our neural net and with the final result we can do the correction of the parameters of our neural net which are naturally uh, weight coefficients and the biases yes our shift any nodes in any neural in any neural of our in any node not of our neural net. So the last the last uh, time we talked about over overfitting or overtraining for our uh, neural net. So first of all we have a very beautiful algorithm. Then we begin to, to find out some very big problem to apply our beautiful algorithm. So now we discuss, let us discuss our problem and, uh, and uh, discuss which problem can arise in training uh, situation and how we can avoid some some uh, big problem for training. So, and one of the problem, and one of problem was the speed, uh, lowering of the speed of uh, our training. Yes, the decay of the speed of our training. But we we need to train uh, to, to, to test to train our neural net as fast as possible. And when we have some decay of uh, the speed of our uh, training, it is a big problem. And we uh, thought about um, how can possible to to accelerate essentially accelerate our training and it can be done by substituting the wave function yes the quadratic wave function is a very beautiful function it is smooth function it is a lot of very beautiful properties but unfortunately unfortunately it is a partial derivative it, it is par partial the de 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 derivative can be near to zero, and it can bring us a big problem for 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 the velocity of the of the training of yes of learning process. And we suggested, we suggested to sub substitute uh, the quadratic form of uh, the cost function to the cross entropy uh, post function. Uh, and we have studied that 
they are general property to be the cost function are the same, but the cross entropy function is much better that it can prevent our decay of our training velocity. Okay. And the second pro problem is uh, overfitting or over overfitting or uh, overfitting or over training. Yes, when we have trained our uh, our neural net and begin from from some number of uh, training cycle, epoch, yes, epoch. Uh, we find uh, out that the precision of, of the work of our uh, neural net begin, begin to degradate, begin to decay the, the precision, uh, begin to decay. So our uh, coefficients training uh, come to the worst situation. So we should stop in this situation or or continue in our in other uh, in other way or to stop this training process. So how to what is the situation? For example, we uh, consider our usual our usual neural net with usual topology, which recognizes we, we have designed several times, uh, which recognizes the handwritten the handwritten digits. Yes, so this fifty thousand uh, training image from. Uh, from the Institute of Standard of United States. So let's, for example, instead of 15,000 uh, images, which is a standard, we have taken only 1,000 training images, so some subset of this big sampling. So, we begin to train this uh, this, uh, this uh, neural net is a truncated, truncated number of uh, training images uh, having uh, having chosen uh, the learning rate a eta 0 five uh, multi batch size of 10 or so multi batch and uh, random Choose, choose in the manner of uh, of a, a, a random well mixed. So well mixed uh, means that we take randomly a wide representation uh, among this set of uh, training training set. Okay, so we practically use all all uh, typical patterns of the training set. So we trained for 400 epochs as, as before. And we have, uh, during this training, we have normal uh, de de decrease of uh, our cost function, which is our desired situation. But, but what we find, Instead of uh, our decay of our uh, cost function, which is our criterion, we can find out that the accuracy of recognition of handwritten hand 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 digits, okay, it uh, increase, 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 increase up to 280 epochs, yes, to 280 cycles of learning and then it can be stopped until it degrees in any way it begin to to make the Brownian motion around some level so in this situation we have something like 
the break of our break of our training process. The process was started. So the first two hundred epochs are very successful, and then we have the degradation of our learning. How to how to prevent this this situation? So first of all, there is some funny story that the Nobel Prize winning Enrico Fermi was uh, was once asked the, uh, his opinion of a mathematical model of an important unresolved problem. He asked how many three parameter could be set in the model, yes? How much parameter you think to, to use? And the, the answer was four, four parameters. Fermi told that I remember my friend Johnny von Neyman used to say, which for, with, with four parameters I can fit an elephant. He, he can introduce in this system even an elephant with four parameters. And with five parameter, I can make his wiggle him wiggle his trunk. So wiggle his trunk in any in any in, in any direction for five parameter it is absolutely uh, abund abundant number of parameters. But really, really out of 30 hidden neuron networks, it is very small. Because then we, 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 we should increase to 100 uh, uh, hidden uh, neurons to improve some results. Now 30. And, and so uh, the network for classic file has nearly 24,000 parameters, and it is not enough, enough precise for us. So we deal with a lot of uh, variables. So after this observation, uh, the obvious way to detect uh, overfitting is to keep track of accuracy on the testing data of our uh, network trains. So we can we can uh, do some number of epochs, for example, 15, 10, 15, uh, 10, 200, and so on. And, uh, and uh, to verify the precision we have for 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 uh, for uh, the training set of uh, handwritten digits. We have two sets, yes, 50,000 for uh, training and other 10,000 not for training. It is unknown for the training, but should be rec recognized. And how much percentage it, it can recognize? This is a problem, yes. So we have big set. Only part of this set we, we use for training, and the other part, and the other part, not trained, we should recognize. And the criterion hour to to recognize as more as possible for unknown for this network patterns. So. What happens when we use uh, full training of uh, the set 550,000? Of course, uh, the situation you see in this graph is uh, much improved, is much improved. And it is natural, so, and as we, as we 
increase the number of training data, we always uh, use some 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 advantage. Yes, in the uh, in the term of precision to recognize our uh, neural net. So, uh, in this graph, also over overfitting, overfitting is, sti is still is uh, still going on. So we can we can observe also overfitting, but it is uh, uh, it is great greatly reduced when we increase number of of uh, training data. So. Our network is generalizing much better from the training data, data to the test uh, to, to the test data. In general, one of the best way of reducing over overfitting is to increase the size of our training data. Unfortunately, it can be uh, increased. The procedure of increase uh, the training data can can be uh, can be. Uh, can be expensive or difficult to acquire. So uh, it is not uh, always uh, can can be a practical uh, option. So now uh, let us uh, say about some approach for regularization. Regularization is to avoid the the problem of overfitting when we have some improve and then. They become worse and worse. Okay, first, first we go to the good, to the good direction, and then uh, take some wrong direction. And one of the methods to bridge such problem is to introduce a correction parameter in. Uh, the cost function. It is, it is so called L2, L2 uh, regularization. So, what is it? Uh, it is our classical cross entropy cost function, and we should add to this uh, cost function. Uh, the summation of the of the squares of all the weight parameters. The summation of all weight parameters in square grade. And scaled by lambda divided by 2 n. n is number of our training, of course. N and number of all training sets. Yes, training images. Lambda is some constant which is, which is called which called the um, regularization per parameter. Can, can be can be chosen in some appropriate way. How it is it is not a method, it is an art. Or you, you can try and do this experiment. But the person with experience can uh, guess to divine uh, the, the, the initial value of this part. So, of course, it is not necessary to take our cross entropy function. It is enough to take for example, also our classical square square cost function. Yes, this is first this first term, and uh, to to add the the regularization L two regularization parameter. Why L two? Because uh, what is the space L two? It is space with the square norm. Yes, L1 is the normal model, model of some, some element, and so 
<coughs> in both uh, case, we can we can uh, write the procedure of revalorization as uh, the sum initial not regularized uh, cost function like we considered before plus regularization uh, term which is the common for all uh, all possible uh, form of uh, the cost the cost function why such, such correction should help reduce overfit so I would I would uh, be confident that the exhaustive explain explanation explain why it helped to to reduce the overfitting or overtraining is not clear for us. There are some intuitive yes heuristic motivations to explain it, but it is not a rigorous, uh, rigorous explain. In uh, neo neural net, there are a lot of mistakes. Uh, once, once we have, we have invented this construction, it is goes by itself <laughs> without our control and it is really really not very quit uh, factor so now let us uh, see uh, from the point of view of uh, the gradient gradient uh, factor so let us uh, let, let let us now take the gradient, uh, the partial the derivative, the derivative of the our modified cost function by weight coefficients and by bias coefficients. So bias coefficient doesn't doesn't matter because it is doesn't depend you see on uh, the, the this term depend only on the variables variable weight variable, but not for on on the bias so it's the derivation it is it's derivation for bias is uh, zero yes because it is constant so we have dc or the w it is this uh, gradient plus some correction plus some correction. what is this correction it is something which is proportion to the value of the weight uh, part something proportion lambda divided by n is some not normalizing constant and the DC by DB is the same like, like non-regular price. So this uh, DC zero by DB, DW uh, DC zero by DB can be computed uh, using our procedure of back propagation as, as we discussed discuss, uh, before. The partial derivatives, derivatives with respect to our biases are unchanged. And so the gradient descent learning rule for the bias that doesn't change from the usual rule. So the rule of back propagation, correction of the coefficient of back propagation remains the same, but the learning rule is changed uh, using the, uh, considering the new factor, yes, which we have differentiated. And new factor is the following, one minus eta lambda n, 
W. So what is it? It is something proportional to to the value of our uh, weight coefficient minus eta. Yes, the velocity. Yes, the velocity of learning. Yes, our uh, constant of uh, it is a parameter of our neural net. By uh, multiply by uh, by the gradient of uh, cost function uh, by respectively by weight coefficient. So this is exactly the same as usual gradient shed learning rule. Expect we first rescale the weight W by a factor one with this factor, this one minus eta lambda by n. This is scaling is some sometimes referred to to as weight weight decay, since it makes the weight smaller. So this term tends to to decrease the weight the weight coefficients at the at the next at the next iteration. Okay. So in this in this uh, situation, if we uh, now train with such uh, regular, uh, regularization factor, yes, so scale uh, the summation of uh, square square of all weights in this uh, neural net, we have also very good uh, de decrease of the cost in training the data, but the accuracy, you see, uh, almost uniformly. So we, we, we don't observe more the overtraining effect, overtraining effect. So it was some repetition of the lecture five. Now lecture six. So, about the regularization problem, yes, yet regularization, regularization problem, we repeat, it is a way of reducing overfitting. So, uh, rewrite one moment the, our regular, regularized cost function, yes, it is uh, first, first adapt. First uh, update is uh, our famous cross uh, entropy cost function plus L2 L2 correction lambda by 2n so summation of square of all, all the weights in the network. In general, we can rewrite it like any traditional cost function plus uh, the regularization correct for correction. So why regularization reduce overfitting first of all? So let us let us now make some enough Analogy and analogical reasoning, and then we sh we shall report it to to, to on our own net. So, for example, let us now build uh, a mathematical models. So to to construct some function. 
Suppose that we have some measurements, yes, x and y, and we, we have uh, we have marked on the uh, plane uh, the dependence of uh, y by x. So let us try now to model y as a polynomial in x. So, um, so, so let us now write uh, a polynomial of nice order. Yes, a zero x nines power plus a one x eight power plus the perfect uh, the The last is uh, three constant, and the penultimate, yes, pre last is uh, the linear uh, term, which fits the da uh, data exactly. So the graph of such polynomial will be, we can, we, we can construct this graph, will perfectly and smoothly fit between these uh, points. So, this uh, that provides an exact fit. Also, we can see this graph and there, but, but it is, uh, it is, uh, it is almost straight line with some noise. So, we can write down some uh, linear function y is equal to 2x, yes, and have such approximation. So we can think about that it can be linear dependence with some noise of measurement or some error, uh, random error. Uh, add to this process. Uh, the question is, which of these is the better model of prediction? Which is more likely to, to be true? Depends. Of course, depends. Not, not possible to say. So consider two possibilities now. First, the non nice, non uh, nice order polynomial is, in fact, the model which truly describes the real world phenomenon. And the model will therefore, uh, therefore generalize, generalize perfect. And the second, the correct model is the linear model. And there is a, a, a little additional noise, noise due to say uh, approximation error and or, or measurement error or other effects. And that is why the model is not an exact fit. fit. It is not a priori possible to say which of these two possible is correct, or indeed there are some. So third possibility, for example. So uh, in this, uh, in the case, uh, the, the model y is equal to two x plus no noise seems much very simpler. It is much simpler, really then the polynomial of uh, nice order. It would be surprising if that simplicity has occurred by chance. And so we suspect that the linear model plus noise express some un underlying truth. In this point of view, the nice order model is really just learning the effect of local noise. 
So it absolutely absorb, yes, the local noise. And so while the ninth order model works perfectly for this particular data, data points, the model will fail to generalize to other data points. And the noisy linear model will have greater predictive power. So the possibility of prediction of linear model, even if it is not, it's more roughly, yes, the, its predictive, uh, predictive power is much better. So let us see what this point of view means for neural networks now. Suppose our work mostly uh, has small waves, as uh, we tend to happen in a regularized network. So it uh, epoch by epoch it, it it tends to 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 diminish diminish the the weights uh, coefficients, the weights coefficients. That makes it difficult for for regularized network to learn the effect of local noise in the data. It's lit, little, or it is live simple pieces of evidence don't matter too too much to output of the network. And instead of this, a regularized network learns to respond to type of evidence which are seen often across the training set. So, uh, a network with large weights may change it, uh, its uh, behavior essentially. Yes, very, very in, in big amplitude. In response to small change in the input. And, and so, an unregularized uh, network can use large weights, weights to learn a complex model um, that carries a lot of information about the noise in the training data. So, what is the uh, main main source of uh, our training? Uh, what is it? super training? Yes. Overfitting, overtraining. So, why we saw the uh, firstly the good increase of our precision to to to, to recognize the digits, but up to some epoch, yes, to 280, and then uh, not more. Uh, we 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 observe not more the increase of our precision. But some some noise begin. This is noise because there is some noise of uh, of uh, training data, okay, and not regularized uh, neural net begin to to learn the noise. But we need uh, to to ignore it, the noise and to train the essential essential behavior. But what is the noise? Uh, what is the essential information? Not clear. So this regularization factor, yes, adept, is important to 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 important to to compensate the the effect to for learning learning the noise of our training data. Let's return to the problem of uh, digit recognition. Now, a network with 100 hidden neurons has nearly, nearly 80,000 80, parameters. So we have only 50,000 50, images, less number, yes, for training data and 80,000 parameters. So it's like uh, to try to fit an 80,000 degree polynom polynomial 
to 50,000 data points. So should be some not correspondence to to the dimension of our our number of uh, of data and the number of our uh, parameters. Much more parameters than number of data. But uh, our so by all reasons our network should overfit terribly. And yet, as we saw early, such network act actually does a pretty good job generalizing. Why, why, why we don't observe the overtraining in this case? Not, not well understood. It is not well understood, but um, it supposed that the dynamic of gradient descent learning in, in multi-layer net has a self-regularization effect. So we invent some religions that the, the, chain, the neural net has some self-regularizing self-regularization effect. This conjuncture, uh, conjecture, is exceptionally fortunate. Yes, it's very pleasant to, to, see, to listen about, but it is not always, uh, there is somewhat disquieting that we don't understand why it is, it is the case. Okay? But in the meantime, we will adapt a pragmatic approach and use a regularization whenever we can. Our neural networks will be the better for it. So, in any way, uh, the person who use the neural net use any way regularization without thinking about. And tell that it, it is always uh, always some factor which can increase our efficiently, but, but never can decrease. Now let us see other, other method of regularization. L, L, L1 regularization. So we, we have this almost same factor, but not the quadratic L2 matrix but L1 matrix, yes, so, uh, the summation of all absolutely absolute value of all weights of our network. Intuitively, it is uh, similar to L2 regularization. Also, it uh, should tend to decrease the, all weight coefficients, uh, epoch to epoch. But some, uh, some uh, difference we should expect. And really it is so, because uh, x squared is a smooth function, differentiating. But the model W is not the differentiation group zero. So, you see, it is very strange function. It is a very strange function uh, model in, in Z. Why? Uh, what is the function continuous? What is the continuous function in, in uh, a point X? The key function in point X is the, uh, that the, the limit of the function is the point X coincides with the value of the function in the point X. So it doesn't, it doesn't jump. It doesn't jump. <coughs> uh, 
what is the differentiability? This is the continuous continuous smooth function. But for example, such function, such function, typical, continuous but not differentiable. Why? Because the limit like the derivation, yes, the limit of uh, the uh, portion, portion of increment of function divided by the increment of argument uh, on right and on left side of this point are different. And it is a very big problem of differentiation and the smooth. The smooth. But when we uh, differential uh, differentiate x mod x, it is the sigma. sigma. So jumps here minus one it is plus one. This function. Yes, it jumps and. Uh, Formally, uh, the the tangent of uh, the pop the exponent is equal to infinity. But you see, on the the derivative on the left and on the right is zero. It is something special. It is something special. And really, really, in this situation, we can formally uh, formally put the F it is F modulus F X to put it uh, by definition is equal zero. It is not it is not good by definition of the limit, but we formally can accept this convention and everything every mathematical reason works. It works very, really, very really good. Also in the neural net. Why? Because let's now di make different di differentiate of, of this new cost function. Our A1. Remember where this one. But anyway, I, this is so we differentiate this function, yes, taking the derivative. And uh, we have the DC by DW is equal to DC zero by DW, like. Plus this correction, uh, correction uh, term, yes, lambda by n, signum w, where signum is uh, such a jump function. Using this expression, we can easily modify the propagation to do stochastic gradient descent using L1 regularization. The resulting update rule is what uh, at, at for for back propagation is W we change by W prime W minus uh, eta lambda and sigma W minus eta DC zero by DW. So uh, we can uh, estimate DC zero by DW using a mini batch uh, average like we take uh, yes 10 10 uh, samples to, to to very very easy to calculate the, the dc zero by dw by this small batch and then we take some average so it's, it's very easy and then to let us compare for zero for 
L2, yes, or smooth function, we have this rule of, uh, of uh, rewriting the coefficient, our back propagation. In both expressions, the effect of regularization is to shrink, to reduce the weights. This accords with our intuitions that both both kinds of regularization penalize large weights. So we absolutely diminish all the weights. And first of all, the large weights. But the way of the weights shrink is different. In L1 regularization, the weights shrink by a constant amount toward zero. And in L2 regularization, the weight shrink by an amount which is proportionally to W. It, it, is absolute, it is absolutely clear the second assertion because uh, what is the derivative of W squared? To, to W, so it is proportional to, to W. But in, in the first, by a constant amount uh, to zero, why? Because this this uh, reason that, uh, for example, DC by DW is not de de defined when W equal to zero. Yes, but if uh, if W is equal to zero, we and we diminish. A, 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 every 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 iteration, our coefficient, it is nothing to diminish, so it is not problem. It doesn't touch automatically. So this is this is the the why why it is not terrible and why the. Oh, both both uh, regularization uh, make good results. Now there is some very specific, very uh, very strange and very specific method: dropout regularization. We can modify, for example, the cost function. That see by some correct co correction uh, term but uh, in, in this case we don't don't touch uh, our neural net topology and uh, modify only um, our cost function now drop out regularization uh, means that we uh, exclude some neural net nodes, some, some neurons. Um, it, it, it is a temporary exclusion, but ex exclusion. And it also brings to very good uh, dropout, uh, drop, uh, regularization of, of our neural net, and in the sense that there is not uh, over overfitting over learning. So consider some any uh, architecture of uh, our neural net. For example, three input to output and some one hidden layer. In particular, let's say that we have training uh, input X and the corresponding desired output y as usual normally we would train it by forward pro propagating uh, x over the network and then back propagating to determine the contribution of the gradient so it's, it's usually iteration for procedure to adjust the our parameters an exception change uh, an exception, change this process. We start by randomly 
and temporarily removing half of the network's hidden neurons, leaving the input and output neurons unchanged. After that, we, we will have approximately such a network. Note that the excluded neurons, those temporarily removed, are still marked in the diagram. So, for example, we so at, at any iteration, we choose randomly and uh, uniformly randomly a half of neuron neurons in our hidden in our hidden layer. You see? Now here hidden layer exclude and to automate our normal procedure. Then we, we return back to, to reconstruct this uh, hidden layer, then to exclude other other randomly other randomly chosen uh, three yes half of of uh, neurons. Also make some training then and so on. So we feed X forward over the modified network. Any, any pass, any pass, we feed over modified network and then propagate the result back by use of procedure also over the modified network. Once we have done this with mini batch of examples, uh, we update the appropriate weights and uh, biases. We then repeat this procedure, first restoring the excluded neurons, then choosing a new random subset of hidden neurons to, to, to remove, estimating the gradient for another mini wedge, and so on. So exclude and do forward feed and the propagation correction. Then also is to 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 return this uh, hidden uh, to to exclude other random half of elements. Then to 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 make, make uh, the forward feed of X, and then to make, make propagation correction of the parent and so on. So uh, Naturally, these weights and biases were learned under condition in which half of hidden neurons were excluded. Different, different intermediate, any pass, different intermediate uh, neurons. And when we run the network to the fullest, and we have twice as many active hidden neurons to compensate for this, we half yes, dimensiamo. We have the weights coming from the hidden neurons. The, this procedure seems to be strange and artificial. Why? Why it can help uh, regularization? The disabling of uh, internal chains in various combinations correspond to the fact that. Uh, we are training several different uh, network, ne neural networks using the same training data. So we, as as uh, as packets, split several neural neural nets. Okay, and then to to make some average uh, behavior in learning of this splitting uh, several neural nets, which are subnets of our uh, complete net. So, the different uh, network with uh, this is excluded, excluded neurons uh, may, may differ at first and sometimes training may produce different results. In such cases, we could apply some sort of averaging of working scheme to decide which output to take. So we, we can have some 
very big difference in of results. Not necessary uh, subsets, results of subsets converge to our desired uh, complete network. So one can uh, then or make average or make some rotation. So to, 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 to elaborate some rule to estimate which is good and which is bad. For example, if we train five networks and three of them classify the number as three, three recognition, then it is probably a three and other two networks are probably just wrong. This averaging scheme is often useful, okay? Way to reduce overfitting. The reason is that different networks may overfit differently, and the average can help to eliminate some overfitting. An heuristic explanation of, of the usable nets uh, of, uh, of is exclusion, exclusion of uh, intermediate, intermediate uh, uh, layer neurons can be the following. Such te technique reduces the, the complex co-adaptation of neuron, since a neuron cannot re rely the presence of set certain neighbors. Yeah, uh, clear, yes. Some neighbors can, uh, can, can, can produce some negative effect to other. So when we, uh, when we uh, split uh, our network to more simplified, we can avoid the neighbor effect of learning. Is it, as a result, it has a lot more re reliable features than can be useful in collaboration with many different random subsets of neurons. In other words, uh, we, if we imagine our neural net as a model that makes predictions, then the exception will be a way to guarantee the stability of the model against the loss of certain parts of the evidence. And why we take only one hidden layer? You see, in the, in the next lectures, I will expose a, a fundamental theorem of uh, neural net uh, networking uh, theory. And this theorem will assert that uh, any function, any function with all complexity of its uh, its behavior, of possible behavior, with all complexity of its possible behavior, can be calculated and predicted by some neural net, any function, any function which exists can be precisely calculated by some neural net. And moreover, more, moreover, this, it is not pre precise uh, prediction, but as precise as we, we want. So for any epsilon which which we can uh, which, which we can uh, choose, yes, uh, first of uh, the construction of our uh, neural net, then we have the preci precision of recognition of uh, the value of this function prediction of the value of function with the precision not less than epsilon. Not, not more than this. Not, ah, not like pre precision, not less than this. Of course. 
And moreover, uh, for this uh, scope, we need to have only three layers. Uh, input, output, and one hidden, one hidden. And so, if we have some uh, networks with a lot of hidden layers, it all it, it it only deal with, for example, to diminish the number of neurons in any layers. But the precision of our uh, neural net is enough for all type of the problem is one in layers, but perhaps a lot of uh, neurons. So we can simplify this uh, uh, this neural net using very deep with a, a lot of hidden steps, but with a small number of uh, neurons. So, in this sense, the technique is likely to L1 and L2 regularization, which tend to reduce the weights, and in this way make the, the network more resilient to the loss of any individual links in the network. The true, you see, it is it is very interesting thing that when we create some training data, this training data begin to to to, to can contain some errors and uh, noises. And our chain can can uh, begin to learn not not the substantial thing, but our noises and errors. So we should now to to introduce some methods, yes, to to exclude some noise influence. Ah, the true measure of usefulness of exclusion is its huge success in improving the efficiency efficiency of ne neural networks. So such exclusions, random exclusions, uh, has huge success in real practice because it it is uh, improving efficiency efficiency in in. Uh, in very big, uh, very big rate. Uh, in the original work, where this method was presented, it was applied to many different problems. Uh, so, for example, for example, for uh, for the problem of classification of digits for from the American uh, set of uh, and written uh, numbers, yes, using a simple feed forward network similar to one of our uh, of we consider. Uh, the best result in, in some paper uh, communicates the best result for such a architecture was an accuracy, accuracy of 98.4%. They improved it to 98.7 using the combination of dropout and a modified form of L2 regularization. So this small thing can essentially increase the result. And of course, for example, for it is very important important uh, any any small move to, to 100 percent. Why? Of course, uh, doesn't mean, uh, do, doesn't matter for uh, recognition of digits. This year, uh, but for example, uh, uh, the automatic driver, car driver, yes, in, uh, in Tesla, for example, you see, without, without the person, yes. Uh, car drive, 
and there the percent percentage of error should be very very near close to one one hundred percent. Artificial expanding of training data. So, uh, as we have seen before, when we take on only 1,000 1, uh, training data for, for, from the data set, this MNIST, this MNIST database, so we we have not good result. Yes, about eighty five percent, but it is not a good result. So uh, let us try. Ah, no. So the accuracy dropped to down to percent percentage. In the mid 80s, yes, about 83 is 85 percent. When we use only 1,000 training in image, let's try training our 30 hidden uh, neuron network. We, yes, with uh, with uh, what 8 800 something yes input for pixels and 10 output. To decide which number we can recognize. Uh, we train using mini batch of size 10, learning rate 5, eta to 5, regularization parameter lambda 5, 0, and the cross entropy cost function. The training 30 epochs. So here we use, you see, 10,000, 20,000, and so on, data, 50,000. And accuracy, we, we can see 96, about up to 96 or 50,000. It can be seen that the classification accuracy increases significantly with an increase of the amount of uh, training the, the data. For example, if we convert this graph to logarithmic scale, yes, the 10, uh, 10 elevated to the second, to the third, to fourth, so logarithmic scale, we can see that the accuracy all always increasing. This suggests that if we take a much larger amount of data, say millions or, or even billions of hand handwritten examples, rather than uh, 50,000, then we are likely to get much better performing network even of such a small size. Getting more training data is a great idea. Unfortunately, this is can be expensive or, or difficult to acquire, but there is some possibility to, to make some artificial artificial uh, increasing of our data. For example, if we take one image of a file from uh, our uh, data set, yes, and then let us rotate this file, uh, for example, by 15 degrees, 100 degrees. So it is clearly it is the same number, but at a pixel level, as we scan now this image, it is very different from the image available in the MNIST database. So it is reasonable to assume that adding this image to the training data set can help 
our network learn more about image classification. So we can apply rotation and the transformation of for each uh, uh, M and MNIS symbol. We can also expand our training data by doing a few small rotation of the training images from, from the database of this MNIS. And then using the expand, expanded training data set to increase network This idea is very powerful and widely useful. For handwritten digital recognition, a feed forward network with 800 hidden network using, we, we have begin with 15, then expand to 13, then expand to 100. Now, 800 hidden neurons used the across entropy post function was used. Running running this network with the standard, uh, the accuracy was uh, achieved 98.44. By training the network on extended uh, data, they increased its uh, accuracy to 98 and 9. They also experiment with so-called elastic, elastic distortion when uh, some person have some uh, specific uh, illness and cannot uh, go uh, right. So we can simulate numerically this uh, type of uh, ima image and uh, transform and to enrich our uh, data set for uh, a special type of image distortion designed to eliminate random vibration of the muscles on the hand. Using elastic distortion to expand the data, they achieved 99.3% of accuracy. In a sense, they were expanding their network's experience by giving it variations of the handwritten found in real handwriting. So, I think I finish today at this point. Uh, there was, there is, uh, there remain some small problem, but it is not really a mathematical problem, but some heuristic, uh, some heuristic uh, reasoning about the uh, meta parameters, our parameters, yes, lambda, mu, uh, what is uh, W, B. What is the best initial parameter to define to have the, 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 the learning process faster and more precise as possible? There, there are some also mathematical intuitive uh, suggestions about it. I, uh, and then I will tell to, tomorrow about the main theory of, uh, of ne for neural nets. Is it can uh, predict, calculate, predict, calculate as, as you want any function which is exist. Neural net. Okay. So. Today, if, if there is no some question. Is there some question? So tomorrow we shall continue on the main theory.